Saturday morning Back at the music hall I give you my warning I ain't gonna mess with y'all Good up here. Uh, I'd love to get a little of Jim's guitar. Oh. Uh, well, you don't mind strumming it, don't you? Roland, you've been so nice lately. I'm going to be talking about that during the show. It's oh. such a, a change. Yeah, well, I'm. I've been working on my. 
myself. <laughs> wait, here, wait. Save, save all oh, yeah, of that. Yeah. Wait no, till no. we yeah. officially. Right. We've still. This got is all off the record. Three, yeah. Forget None of this is that. for the public consumption. I just need to run over this new thing I've been working on. Though. If I was Jim Lauderdale's shirt. Oh no, no, that's not. And it's not ready yet. I'll, I'll hold off on that. But I'm thinking the next line would be something about untucked. But the problem is, then I'm going to have to rhyme untucked with something, and <clears throat> there aren't many options that are appropriate. Uh, yeah, I guess there's more than I thought. My mind just went to that one place. <laughs> if I were Jim Lauderdale's shirt I would go untucked I can't see what it would hurt if I were Jim Lauderdale's shirt. If I were Jim Lauderdale's pants, I would be mad at his shirt. He never gave me a chance To be tucked in And do my work But then if I were his boots Or one of his fancy suits Better yet, one of his sweet guitars. I could be in the Hall of Fame with all the other big stars, but I'm not Jim Lauderdale's shirt. Jim Lauderdale's pants. <laughs> you guys, <clears throat> how late were you up last night? And what were you drinking? <clears throat> well, you should have drank more and slept less. Oh, you didn't, <coughs> you didn't hear any of that, did you, Jim? No. No. Well, oh. Erlen, we'll just wait for the word whenever it's time to... Are we waiting for the crowd? We better not do that. Security at the gate, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because most of our fans have pistols in their purses, you know. Yeah, they had the metal detector. So, 
That's what's holding everything up. Ah, oh, Jim, you're so much easier to work with than Sean Camp. Well. Oh my God. He's just such a pain all the time. You remember her face and her, and her voice. Yeah. Hey, you gonna do any of your new record? Any Pardon? of those songs in your new record? Am I going to? I could. I mean, where are you going to? I'm not really sure. I don't have anything planned. <clears throat> How's that though? <laughs> Is the door locked out there? Could we get it open? We want to let the people in. We want to. <laughs> oh, two moments. Okay. Well, we'll wait. You know, see, this is the special VIP crowd. You guys paid extra and everything. And, you know, through the fan club big things and all that and the the contests you're our our contest winners you guys are the special ones the yeah. the chosen few mm, yeah but don't rub it in to everybody yeah don't let any of them know yeah. what happened here this yeah. morning yeah this is all just for us it's Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jim and I have had a great time this morning. Yeah, this has really we'll been. See y'all next this year. This has been fun. I wish we had. I wish we Did had get time, the time wrong? for more stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wish we had time, but it's like I said earlier. Yeah. That is the secret of life. That's true. It just came to us, mm -hmm. and we could explain it for the first time. The secret of life. I hope that somebody recorded it. I know there was that power yeah. thing halfway through the set where we just did stuff without a PA. But uh, yeah. it was during that time this clarity came to me, this vision about what life yeah, really it, it's means. It's a shame there weren't more people in here to witness it, but yeah, I guess apparently there's a time yeah. change or something we yeah. weren't aware Before of. Before we get up, because our set's over and wait for the next yeah. person. We just wanted to sit here for a little while because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I think that was oh, I, the I, best show I ever gave listen, I feel, this morning. And those those mantras that, that you were doing, I feel cleansed I in a way. Too. I do too. That, it's hard for me to get up and leave this spot this moment. I know. Well, that secret transmission that that Tibetan Lama That's what had given to me that he said, you can only use it one time. And so I did that chant. Right for this morning, just for these few that, folks that were in here. Oh, for wow. the rest of your lives, you should have financial and spiritual prosperity. Wow. So, Man. yeah. So lucky. But so before we get up and yeah. get off the stage and yeah. let, let let us just sit here for a minute and just kind of let the, you know, unwind a little bit from this blissful, incredible show we just had. I mean, yeah. it was just, I can't believe it. I mean, it was like 
I, I don't think I'll ever have a show like that again. I don't know how we could top what I we just did in the, in the past I'll, 30 minutes here I on this stage. Just, I, I'll, do, I'll do the one show I've got left tomorrow, and then I don't yeah. think I'll perform. Yeah. Because even that show tomorrow will be a letdown yeah. from the show we just did. Yeah. I wish we could, but we no. we want to keep things on schedule. No, listen, we gave it everything we, we had. We left I, I it all. Yeah, I we mean, left it all is, with you guys. Yeah. That that past thirty minutes, you you folks that were in here, we left it all for you. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I said things can you know that I was feeling inside that I shared with y'all that I've never shared with an audience mm. before it was, and uh, I couldn't do it again ever <laughs> listen it was a little uncomfortable for me to be a part of it but I'm, I'm know, honored but that I were, was there I'm that glad, you would open up like that hey, I'm for all of us that here. were here in the past few minutes here. and we worked out all of the stuff between us yeah. in front oh, of y'all this that morning that feels this so day. much better I, uh, it just I do too Yeah, I feel clean and whole. Well, I, I feel like I'm I'm finally like on the same plane with you, Jim. It, I do too. Like we've been struggling, you know. Yeah. It was a real it's like, breakthrough. It's like we've been and, uh, boxing or something and now I just yeah. all because of what happened in the last 30 minutes. I know. Right and here on I this stage. I still can't really see. I left my contacts back at the Hotel. I can't really see, but I'm yeah. sure well, that full house this morning yeah. just also it made me feel energized. Thank y'all yeah. for that. Yeah. Wait, what? The, oh, the other act hadn't shown up yet. We can do a few more. You want to hear a few more? Oh. Okay. Well, all right, we'll try. I mean, it's going to... It's going to be hard it's after that. The, after the expectations of our set this morning. Uh, I guess since we are going to do a few more, we should let the other folks know what happened. This, uh, I mean, apparently there was an issue with the key at the door there, and you guys weren't let in in time to witness what Jim yeah, and I... I'm, God, I feel terrible about that. We were just discussing how we, it was really, a, so it was a spiritual thing that happened yeah. between us and the few people that did get in. Yeah, I guess so. I'm just finding this out now. I thought it was a full house. I'm, that goes to show well, you it, how in the musical zone I was. Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to let us do a few more here, so. Yeah. All right. It would be a, a shame. <laughs> Verlin, I'm using those new strings that you gave me last night, and you said, put those on the night before. Don't even touch them till you get to the music hall. They'll be, I said, don't I need to stretch them out to make sure they're in tune? You said, no, no, no. They'll be in tune when you change them, and it'll hold the tune. So, so uh, that's, I appreciate that. Thank you. As always, he's looking out for me. Trying. So, uh, <laughs> slow as molasses, I'm taking my chances of showing up for the deadline. Not in a hurry, a rush, or a flurry of footsteps that fall on the signs. Oh, I could even ride a caterpillar just to try to get there faster. There's no guarantee when I'll arrive. Waiting at the clock And 
until the ticking stops. Oh, I could even ride a caterpillar just to try to get there faster. There's no guarantee when I'll arrive. Molasses, a snail races past us when ever there's some place to go. Oh, I could even ride a caterpillar just to try to get there faster. There's no guarantee when I'll arrive. At the clock until the ticking stops. Oh, I could even ride a caterpillar just to try to get there faster. There's no guarantee when I'll arrive. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, and good morning. Welcome to the Verlin and Jim Breakfast Show. And uh, that, that song I just did, I got some good news. I just heard back. Some folks had seen us do that song together down here, some uh, TV producers for uh, public television, and uh, they're going to make a children's show out of that, and they're going to use Verlin's and I faces and put them on these cartoon it's it's called caterpillar pickers and so we will be these two <laughs> caterpillars crawling around and then we'll pick up you know we've got so many arms we play all the instruments you know the mandolin the dobro the stand-up bass banjo and uh so anyway without any further ado here's my wow. partner on the new caterpillar pickers show verlin thompson Wow, that's great news. Uh, you know, I knew that there were talks. Yeah. I knew there were things in the works, but I didn't know the details. I, I wanted to let you know right here. <laughs> wow. At live in front of everybody. Caterpillar Pickers. That, yeah. that was not going to be the name of it. I, it was supposed to be something like Super Pickers. I know, but, you know, hey, when they offer us a deal like that, I mean, we're going to make hundreds of dollars okay. over the next 10 years with this contract I signed. Now, don't be mad at me for getting us so much, but uh, anyway. Well, that's my bad for kind of, I just, I let you take over. I said, Jim, I trust you, so uh, that's on me. I just have to deal with it. Well, I, I appreciate you putting that responsibility on Caterpillar pickers. I, are we going to have sponsors or anything? Have you talked about that? Yeah, we sure are going to have oh, sponsors. We, oh, you... <laughs> CVS Hand Sanitizer is sponsoring the first season of Caterpillar Pickers. Folks, go to your CVS, and that's a trusted brand. Use this and nothing else. I know I always like to use some CVS hand sanitizer after, after some good, slow picking. <laughs> Where your fingers don't even sweat or anything, but you feel like you just need to clean them up a little. Yeah. You grab that CVS hand sanitizer and... Field with the buckaroos. I saw them 
office in blue suede shoes Folsom prison in Tulsa time I went to Carolina in my mind I could walk the streets of Baltimore I could waltz across Texas on a wooden floor And as a knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door When I drop the needle in the groove You see, that's my life there on every track And we've come a long ways from 78s and 45s And 8-track tapes and compact discs And damn, I miss dropping that needle in the groove Oh, but you can call me one of the lucky few Cause I've always done what I wanted to do And it started back in 1962 When I dropped the needle in the groove When I dropped the needle in the groove When I dropped the needle in the groove 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 I dropped the needle in the groove. Thank y'all. You've been great. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Verlin and I love y'all. Yep, we do. Oh, we, hey, we can do some more. Oh. Y'all want to hear some more? Oh. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, great. All right, well, here's one uh, Verlin actually requested, oh. and you know what Verlin wants, Verlin gets, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're too kind now. And this one is uh, off of the new record. Your new record. Called Game Changer, and this is the first song called That Kind of Life, That Kind of Day. That no that fire papa 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 When a baby tastes a little bit of sunshine Kicks their legs and bounces up and down Grins and laughs and everything is so fine 
We want to keep them that way for a while They all grow up and everything is different The way that history comes into play I hope their hopes will come through while they're growing And they'll have that kind of life, that kind of day Go through all you must do And know that while you're getting where you're going Go through, don't go away And have that kind of life, that kind of day Guitars just laying there ripe for the picking Sitting lonely waiting to be played You get to make the music that you're hearing To hear it all will carry you away Someday when finally things are back to normal What is normal these days you might say I hope your hopes will come through while you're waiting And you'll have that kind of life, that kind of day Go through all you must do And know that while you're getting where you're going That kind of life, that kind of day Everybody wants that kind of feeling For things to go a little more their way I hope your hopes will come through while you're waiting And you'll have that kind of life, that kind of day Go through all you must do And know that while you're getting where you're going Go through, but don't go away And have that kind of life, that kind of day And have that kind of life, that kind of day Thank you. Thanks oh. a lot. That one is also going to be in the first episode of the Caterpillar Pickers that Verlon and I are going to do it. So be oh. looking out for that. Wow. There's so much breaking news that I had no idea about. So you, so you got the first song in the first episode, one of your songs. Well, I, I, That's you, okay, no, Jim. I'm just no, saying. Now, I haven't told you this yet. Oh. But before that song is played in the first episode, I told I had to argue with those producers and all the investors and all those people. I said, no, now listen, Verlin is going to have to get a song in before that kind of life, that kind of day. Would you like to hear what it's going to be? Yes. All right. Well, it's going to be this one coming up right now from Mr. Verlin Thompson. <laughs> Well, I can't stand a collar, 
makes it hard to swallow. <coughs> but where you go, I'll follow. Hey, I'm a lucky dog. I can't get used to getting all this love and petting. You're about to spoil me rotten. Hey, I'm a lucky dog. I used to be a homeless hound. I was running round up and down every street in town. Whoa, but then I found you, baby, and the one kiss drove me crazy. There ain't no ifs or maybes, baby. I'm a lucky dog play. Let me tell this story in the in the show, Jim, because it's. Well, let's see how it goes. Oh, let's see what that story yeah. is. Well, it, it's important to the to the under the complete understanding of the song because this song was kind of written as a just a little oh just a fun little ditty. My little neighbor girl one day she came up to my house and she had she had picked up an old stray dog on the way up to the house and we sat there on the porch talking about this old stray dog and she was she was uh i think eight years old at the time and and she informed me that this was going to be her new pet and she just picked him up out of the ditch on the way up to my house he had fleas and losing his hair and all kinds of stuff and and she'd already decided this dog was going to be her long long time companion you know and I said well have you you better talk to your parents about it before you make a big decision like that and, she, and she's eight years old and she goes well they most generally do what I tell them to do <laughs> so as she walked away she was rubbing that old dog and just getting fleas all over and everything and I just looked down the driveway and I thought, man, that is one lucky dog. Well, it sets my tail to wagging, my tongue is almost dragging, I can't keep from bragging, baby, I'm a lucky dog. I used to be a homeless hound, I was running around a man. There ain't no ifs or maybes, baby, I'm a lucky dog. There ain't one if there may be, baby, I'm a lucky dog. <laughs> so maybe the second episode, I can get maybe that one in, second episode? No, oh, you know what, no. they're going to use that in the first episode because oh. there is a story about a dog. They're writing all of this personal stuff in and making it very real. They're doing wow. the story about the the girl. And I'll tell you, speaking of how real that is, that song hits home to me, talking oh. about losing hair and having fleas. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm there with you. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, brother. Yeah. You're talking to me on yeah. that one. Yeah. Well... <clears throat> I, I'm sure they'll write in a scene, probably for. I, I will think you they get will. To, They're will, will mirroring we, our lives. Oh, yeah, with this series, yeah. it's going to be. I can just see the cutaway a, now to Jim laying in an old nasty bed, scratching and. Been there, done that. <laughs> Last night. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> Trying to sleep. Uh. <laughs> you know, I, I'm so involved in thinking about this TV show, The Vision of a Guy. I don't even know what to do next. Does anybody yeah. have any requests or anything? I'll try to. I'm so wrapped up. In this. You're, you've been consumed with it, getting this thing off, off the have. ground. It's really been taking up a big part of my life. Kind of like back in the day when we first started yeah. working together, we'd done a few gigs and we were both pretty uh, music biz wasn't treating us 
right. great. And then uh, I had gotten this call from this casting director about the Geico Caveman commercial, and I got <laughs> Berlin involved. And so we did those first, like, three Geico where we play these very kind of stuck-up cavemen, you know, that are kind of snooty and everything. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, that got us, that got me through for a couple of years, the royalties on that. Yeah, and that's, it's some, good, some pretty good grocery money there for a while. It sure you know? is. It, and then it, they, yeah. they, re they replaced us with a lizard, am I, am I right? Is that what? Yeah. An yeah, animated they got, lizard. That they don't have They thought that pay. was better than us. Yeah. Our caveman routine. Yeah. Whatever. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Now, this one, speaking of money and getting... Uh, I'll tell the little back story right after this one but oh. because I've got to set it up with this song. I make a wish that you would be near enough to hear me when I whisper, whisper, I think I love you, whisper, whisper, I think I love you too. If I had a chance or two, I would make sure that you knew what's running through this heart of mine. In case you'd care to know, and so I'll whisper, whisper. a lot. Now let me tell you a quick, I'll condense this back story. Yeah. Um, I had been getting calls on that song for several years by this person that helps facilitate selling your songs to somebody for a commercial and I said no, I don't want any of my songs used in commercials. They can use them for a children's show series but not a commercial. I don't want, I, you know. So anyway, this agent kept coming back to me saying, listen, they keep, they have quadrupled the money. Would you just think about it? So 
the other day I said, okay, and they sent a script and they said, and look, you're going to be the face of this product and you're going to be all over social media ads, print ads, TV commercials, everything. And, I, and he told me the amount and I said, all right, I'll, I'll read the script. So, okay, <clears throat> it, it has me, uh, I'm playing in this dingy nightclub and there are just a few people sitting in these tables and they're kind of half asleep and just you know, look very bored, and this one guy literally goes, Wah. you know, and then, it sh and then it shows me in the dressing room, this dark, filthy graffiti on the walls and this cracked, dusty mirror, and in the line, in the song Whisper, it says, maybe in our autumn days, when my hair has turned to gray, and as I'm as that line goes by, I'm looking at my hair, and then I take this little paper bag from the top of the table, and I rip it open, and it's this bottle, and it says Grecian Formula 7. <laughs> and I tear open that bottle, and I get the little comb out, and then that's the end of the scene. The next wow. scene, I'm playing at this big stadium, uh, and thousands of people, they're yeah. just jumping up and yeah. down and getting into it so much, and, yeah. and then the next scene, it shows me by my tour bus, and, you know, big rigs, yeah. you know, yeah. several tour buses, but I'm standing up there, there's a line autographs. around the block yeah. of me signing autographs, and I look up and I go, thanks, Grecian Formula 7. Wow. wow. Okay, so, wow. I get this call this morning from that agent and and he said what do you think and i said okay i'm 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 in i'm gonna do this and he said well great you have to get in your rent a car right now get to the jacksonville airport because we're meeting all these big wigs at two o'clock oh, at the four seasons steakhouse and we're going to sign that deal. They've got all these pop photographers, but we have to do it today or we lose the deal. And I said, okay, all right, I got to hurry and get packed. And uh, I called Verlin and I said, and, and Beth, well, well, I called Beth, Judy, and, uh, and I said, she said, hey, we can't wait for the show with you and Verlin at the music hall. And I said, Beth, I need to talk to you. And she said, you know, people have been, they love when you and Verlin are together and they really are so, I've gotten so many comments about the, 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 the show. And, they, and I said, Beth, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt you. I need to tell you something. She said, a lot of people just love you guys together so much. Not so much apart, not so much, but together. Yeah. Yeah. They love you, and, yeah. and she said, well, sorry, Jim, I know you're getting ready. What, what is it you want to say? And I said, Beth, I've got to tell you that I might be 15 minutes late to the sound check today with Verlin. Folks, I couldn't, you, you know, and I called my agent and I told them what was going on. I said, they can keep all of their money and all those stakes in New oh, York City. Man. I'm doing my show with Verlin at the Music Hall this morning. So anyway, and without any further ado, here's Verlin Thompson. <laughs> Give me just a minute, Jim. That's one of the sweetest things anyone's ever done for me. Your life could have changed today and instead you stayed with the same old shit that you've been doing all these years. That's me. Wow. Bless your heart, man. My friend Jim, that shows what kind of man this man is. Give him a hand, would you please? Thank you. But we're going to have to hurry up because I got an offer to do just another little gig. It's just a bar gig downtown there in Live Oak, but uh, I told him, yeah, hell, I'll cut me and Jim's thing short, 30 minutes. <laughs> Cause I can make some pretty good tips, I think, down there. So, anyway, so let me get moving on here. Well, he's a headed. 
it for the gig With a fender amp and a welding rig In the bed of his beat up pickup truck He's been a working all day and he's covered up in red cattle dirt But when he puts on a hat and embroidered shirt And gets a beer in his belly and straps on his telly He'll hit that stage a-smiling She's him in a purse skirt Just a little bit shorter What does it hurt When you're waiting them tables And tending the bar It's all about getting another tip in the jar And paying off the trailer Not to mention that new guy That's playing guitar He's a pipeline welder But he looks like a star And he winked at her last Friday Show put on a show. He came back twice for a standing O. And then he told him he loved him and he said good night. And treat you pretty little waitress right. Then everyone was gone. And she poured him a beer and a shot of Patron. And right there at the bar, he grabbed his guitar and he wrote a little song about her. And she said, Oh my God, it couldn't get any better if I'd have written the script. He's writing his songs and I'm a raking in tips. And it wouldn't be long till there's a kissing on the lips. And she paid off the trailer. Yeah, who knows what the future might hold. As a matter of fact, a few nights ago, they did it on the barroom table. break she'd always told him that's all it would take and she was standing right there when the call came in it was Brooks and Dunn and they wanting him for seven months in Vegas yeah it could be more they couldn't say for sure but if it all works out they're gonna talk about maybe keeping him even longer and she said Damn you, Brooks and Dunn. You boots, scootin' bastards, look what you done. He's living it up, he bought a brand new truck and a house out in the desert. And she flies out there to see him. And he acts like he don't even know her that well. He tells her that he will, but she knows damn well. They won't be raising no kids together. Yeah, for fortune and fame, it's a crying shame. They won't be raising no kids Sorry, it's tough. <laughs> Not a happy ending, I know, but well, sometimes the truth hurts. And I've got to just with full disclosure telling you, I've been, see, I've been pitching all of our songs to that the Caterpillar Pickers folks. And they said, listen, we love that song that Verlin does on that, but we've got to change a few things. Uh -huh. We've got to change, instead of them getting it on on the barroom table, it's like they're eating lettuce on the barroom table because they're caterpillars, the characters. Uh -huh. And then we clean up the cuss words we say to darn it and to oh. heck with it and poo-poo. So, uh, poo poo? Yeah. I don't know if that's going to work, Jim. Is that, is that in stone or is, it, is that still up for a little negotiation? I, hey, if you want to make $50 oh. off of that song, okay. you better agree well, to what right. they want to do. All right. I'm, I'm listen, I'm going to leave it up to you. We can, you know. I'm leaving it up to you if you think it'll work. You've done so well so far. <laughs> Caterpillar pickers. <laughs> hey, by the way, I just want to say, you know, you notice how well we've been getting along. Now, I know for years, a lot of people have been coming to yeah. our shows just to see if the train wreck is going to happen between us, you know, they to see if we get the daggers out. But...
Well, it's real life, Jim. It's, it's real life. life. They've witnessed and our ups and downs. For years, through we've had everything. this yeah. kind of unhealthy and sometimes healthy competition. And, um, and it's been like yin and yang, yeah, you know? The, yes, exactly. And you No know, the, yang. But, there was no yang. But, the, just, no. Just two but, yings, and that don't what work. Ha what happened after the last time we played up here at the dance tent? Remember yeah. that, folks? Yeah. Last year, yeah. last, last spring. Year. No, no, that was the fall a year ago. Yeah, yeah right. And, yeah. Um, and we were backstage just, you know, we, we usually hadn't been speaking to each other at all. And yeah, uh, we, we were, uh, Jim would do a song and then ask someone else to relay it to me that it was my turn. Yeah, I mean, it was He that. wouldn't even look at me and, and say, it's your turn, but he would look over there and tell the stage manager, please tell Berlin it's her, his turn. It was terrible, it folks. Was it had bad, gotten to Jim. that point, and I... I, after that show, I just said inside to myself, I said, that's it. I can't work with that yeah. son of a insect bee again. I, I can't do it. And so as I was packing up my gear, I felt this hand on my shoulder. And I turned around, and it was Verlin. And I thought, you know, usually he's kind of rough with me whenever he touches me. And I said, I said, what is it, Verlin? And he said, I got to tell you something. And I said, here it comes. What kind of verbal abuse is he going to hurl at me today until I cry, as usual? And he said, I said, go ahead, Verlin. What is it? And he said, I just want to tell you, I'm so sorry for trying to sabotage you on stage, making you look bad, and all the mean and hateful things I've done to you. And, oh, by the way, let me interject something. He left me, he's always looking out for me now, and he left me about 10 messages till they filled up today. He said, listen, I know this is, I hope you get this in time. They've changed our show to two o'clock. I don't even go by there early. I know it says 11 on the schedule, but there's having all sorts of technical difficulties here. Don't show up till two, trust me. And so thank goodness I did come early and apparently they worked out everything and they wanted us. So we're here, but anyway, getting back to my story, <laughs> Verlin said, and he had a tear in his eye, and he said, I, I am truly sorry. I'm being sincere. I'm not kidding. There's no trick to the end of this like there usually is. I'm sorry, Jim. Will you forgive me? And I took a hard swallow, and I said, I do, Verlin. I do. We shook hands. We hugged each other. He said, no more of that sabotaging your career anymore I want to be a friend and so we've you know it's been a a year now since we've gotten to do this and uh, I just let's give Verlin a hand I mean I feel like things have healed with us and uh, and I you know he was very sincere and, and so uh, it's well, great it, to be up here with you today, Verlin. You too, Jim. Sometimes you treat the people you love the worst. And I'm, uh, you know. Wow. We should move on. I, I Let's wanna... do. I, I love you too, Verlin. Let's well, hear it let's again. not go that far. I let's, just... let's hear it again for Verlin. It takes a big man to admit he's wrong. Um, isn't it your turn? <laughs> yeah, Jim, um, yeah, you've, um, you have given me pause to pause even longer to try to find a way to get out of this. 
Oh, you know what, Verlin? And that was very nice of you because you didn't have to do this. I thought it was your turn, and you reminded me it was mine. Oh, oh. Right? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. let's... Uh, I, I thought you were waiting for a, yet another apology from me. No. And, and you've apologized the hell with that. I'm not doing that and again. And very profusely. And so I... I say I'm sorry once, and then we move on. Let's so, do. Okay. Let's, we have. All right. And, that's uh, settled. All right. Now, here's a, a song that... Um, it's a, a love song to a color. A color. the sky covering everything within her view Violet your rays first appear like someone that I once knew they purple arms in them disappear like the last time that I saw you catching those waves to come until they're all gone what's the sun been trying to do oh stay and talk a while Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. You know, that sort of went with, with the story about us, you know? It, 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 a transformation. Very well done, kind of Jim. The, the showmanship involved with, with that segue there was just... Uh, well, that's a thing of beauty. 
That's what I always have been saying that I used to always tell you. Well, it's the business, it's show business and the business of show. Remember how I used to just say that to you all the time <coughs> back when we first met? Yeah. And, uh, I do remember when you used to say that. You know, kind of the, first starting writing. Back, yeah. You know? Yeah. I hope you don't mind. I, maybe you've already heard about it, but I actually used that line uh, and wrote a song. Uh, oh, I didn't realize that. Well, good. I'm glad that you yeah, I, were able to use that saying and yeah, put it no, to it good use. Yeah, it worked use. great. Worked great. Uh, I, I haven't gotten around to giving you any credit yet for that, but it's still, you know, I'm still tweaking it, so who knows? Maybe, yeah. you know. Right now, I haven't really come up with anything other than that one line that you contributed, so I'm not, I'm trying to work out the percentages. Hey, whatever, I trust you, Verlin, whatever you want to do. Yeah, so maybe I'll make up for, for the percentages on the uh, Caterpillar Pickers deal, uh, and we'll, it'll all come out in the wash, so to speak. Jim, I went to Nashville 40 years ago from Oklahoma. I walked away from rock and roll to get a honky tonk diploma. I was hungry, young and hungry. I was looking for an offer. And Miss Loretta Lynn, she took me in, that sweet coal miner's daughter. Yeah. You know, I should tell you all this because, uh, you know, everybody's aware we just, we just lost Miss Loretta, but she did give me my very first job uh, as an actual paid staff songwriter for Coal Miners Music. And uh, I wrote there for about a year and she never did do one of my songs. And one day I asked her about it, and she said, Well, Berlin, honey, I'm writing all of my own hits. I don't really need your song. Uh, she said, I, I think probably, because you're basically a tax write-off to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Well, Loretta, I need, you know, I need to get some action, so I may have to move. Uh, it's hard because I love you, but I may have to make a decision to go somewhere else. And she said, honey, I think you should. <laughs> she said, I think you ought to meet some, I, I want to meet, want you to meet some guys by the name of Waylon Holyfield and, and Harlan Howard. And those guys could help you. So, you know what Loretta did? Uh, she actually... I left her company, but she kept paying me for several months until I was sure I got my contract set up with my new publishing company. She didn't want me to be out on the street, and uh, that's the kind of girl she was. Yeah, but she never did do one of my songs. And one day she said, now darling, she said you should hang around with guys like Holyfield and Harlan. Holyfield and Holyfield wrote, Could I have this dance for the rest of my life? That was just one of the many hits that he had. And Harlan, I'm talking about Harlan Howard, he wrote all the hits that Waylon didn't write. So, uh, that's what and Loretta set me down that day and she said, You should hang around with guys like Holyfield and Harlan. She said they go to lunch and they smoke a cigar and they might drink a glass of brandy. She said they write big hits and they leave big tips and spend their evenings with their families. Oh, but I'm glad she didn't tell me just how far I had to go. 
In this show we call the business In this business we call show So then it, it was uh, oh. So I played at the Hickory Holler Mall And I played at Union Station to do a pretty good Johnny Cash impersonation And then one night he walked out of the back It was him and Miss June Carter I had just been impersonating Impersonating Johnny Cash And the side door, the little private dining room opened up And the man himself walked out with June Carter he had heard my impersonation of him. <laughs> and he come walking through the crowd, and he walked right up to me, right in front of me. And the mic was on, everybody could hear, and he, he said, Son, I've heard better, but I ain't heard nobody try no harder. <laughs> but not one who tries harder. So I put that in my bio. I told everyone I know. I said, man, I'm in the show we call the business. It's a business we call the show. that introduced me, Jim, to a Mr. Jimmy Gilmer of the Fireballs. Y'all may know that name, too. Jimmy Gilmer did a little tune called There's a crazy little shack beyond the track. <clears throat> That's a little high for me, but Sugar Shack is what he did. Uh, well, it was Waylon that introduced me. Mr. Jimmy Gilmer of the Fireballs And together they convinced me What did I do? I changed keys And together they convinced me That I could do it all Yes, but later it would come to pass I just could not play that part Cause I could not kiss nobody's ass To get my records on the chart she kept on waiting She kept listening by the radio and I said, Mama, it's just a show We call the business, man It's just a business we call show So here's to all my music brothers Jim Lauderdale my music sisters too Here at home and on the road This one goes out to you And when the print gets fine On the bottom line Don't you give away your soul This show we call the business To this business we call the show It's just a show we call the business it's just a business we call show. Yeah. It's just a show we call a caterpillar picker. Maybe they can work that in. <clears throat> Verlin, uh, I was doing an interview a few years ago with this lady from England uh, who was in school it was uh, but, but she was part of this country radio thing and I was amazed because at her young age she knew who Frank Dykus was who's kind of an obscure but mm -hmm. uh, songwriter these days and then she said oh and I see that you 
do stuff with Verlin Thompson. <laughs> Verlin Thompson, he's my favorite. I just and so I decided to hire her to do my social media stuff. So thank you, oh Verlin, for being so great. And uh, you know, he's got fans all over the world. Yeah. Well, most of that stems from our performances right here. It, it grew from this, Jim, and so I got you to thank for that, no, uh, my no, friend. Really, no, uh, come on. No, no I mean it. Uh, um, no, I... You know, before I started doing these early morning breakfast things <laughs> with you, um, I was just like, you know, playing other evening concerts under the stars and places like that, but... Uh, but we started doing these like breakfast. early morning breakfast shows, you know. Well, people have to eat. Yeah. And they listen. <laughs> and, uh... But it all grew from that. So thank you, Jim. Sure, thank you. So, so I, I owe you so much. I, I just don't really have the words to, to, hey, to forget say. Forget about it. Yeah. You know. My, my song, Brother? I have a song called Brother? Verlin, you go ahead. Do no, uh, we gotta, I'll have to no, think about that. No, we've got a request. Let me think about that. Yeah. It, I'll, let, I'll let Jim do one. I'll, I'll try to remember my song. <laughs> um, you know, see, when Verlin and I do these shows, we don't have anything pre-planned. No, no. A set list. No, and so, it, may, it may appear that we do. Yeah, it might seem like this is but all that's, that's part out. of the showmanship involved, is making it it's look seamless like. Business they call show. And, um, but, uh, so, you know, as in these kind of situations, I have to kind of, you know, really listen to what's going on up here and, and be sensitive to Verlin and see if there's any clues of where I should go with the next song. And so uh, I will do a, a tune. I know you're friends with Harlan Howard and mm -hmm. I got to hang out with him a fair amount. And I was over at his office <coughs> one day and uh, one thing I liked about Harlan was that he always called me kid. Mm. And that made me feel young, mm -hmm. and uh, even though I was in my 40s by that time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so he said, well, kid, how's your love life doing? I said, well, Ooh. Harlan, actually, I just went through a, a breakup, and, and he said, well, you'll know when it's right. And then I had one of those moments where all of a sudden this melody started coming to me, and then as Harlan was talking, to me, his lips were moving, but all I could hear was that melody. And then I said, Harlan, excuse me, I've got this melody going with what you just said. You, I'm, I'm sorry, but let me record that on my cassette player right now. So I did, and then he wow. was sitting there writing several pages, but then we kind of, he edited it down. Wow. So I'll do that for you. I'm sorry that you couldn't love me But I'm grateful for your time And I know they'll come a morning When you won't be on my mind I hope that I'll always be as honest As you've always been with me I just wish that you were feeling That I was what you need Keep your 
heart and your mind wide open. Hold on tight to what you'll find. Cause baby, you're the kind that only loves one time. And you'll know when it's right. I remember when we used to do these, Jim, they were called, they called them workshops. That's right. You're doing a morning workshop. And uh, I used to always come in with something that was sort of workshoppy. You know, something I was, I was working on or I would sing something to somebody else and kind of discuss it and try to, uh, you know, give, some, give people a lesson of some sort. <coughs> But we don't do that anymore. So I went back and, and uh, dug up one of those things. I did one of those workshop mornings. I'm gonna, sheesh, I can't see it, but I'm going to see if I can get through it. Uh, this is a song I didn't write. Well, I... I You'll see as we get into it. I kind of, I put my own touch to it, but it's one of our, our song writing brothers, Jim, uh, Mr. Bob Dylan. Yeah. You know, he does the same thing Jim and I do. We, we write songs and he sings them. <clears throat> Got a Nobel Prize, and, you know. That's what Jim and I do, same, same thing. We're hoping. We're, we're, we're all three, I mean, we're cut from that same, yeah. same cloth. Come gather around people wherever you roam. And 
Except that the waters around you have grown And except it that soon you'll be drenched like a bone And if time to you is worth saving You better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times they are changing Writers and critics to prophesize with your pen. Keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again. And don't speak too soon, cause the wheel's still in spin. And who knows who it'll be naming? The loser now will later be win, <laughs> will be later to win. And the times they are changing. Senators and Congress, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall. For he who gets hurt is he who will stall. And the battle outside is raging. It'll soon rattle your windows and it's shaking your walls. For the times they are changing. And fathers throughout the land Don't criticize what you don't understand Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command And the old road is rapidly aging And get out of the new one if you can't lend a hand For the times they are changing Drawn in the curse, it is cast, and he who was slow will later be fast, and he who was present will soon be the past. The order is rapidly changing. First one. That's where Bob's song ends. I call him Bob. But um, for me, it just felt like there was something missing. And um, I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll just kind of add my own thing to the end of it and see how it goes. Because honestly, here's the thing. It's folk music. Bob Dylan would be the first to tell you he's a, he's a folk singer and a folk songwriter. And what that means is folk music is music for the folks. It's for folks to use when they need it. And, and occasionally change songs uh, to fit what's going on in the world. And um, so folks do that with folk songs. And that's basically what I've done here. <clears throat> and I just hope that Bob's folks don't call my folks <laughs> and sue me over this because... since birth. Ain't it time that we did some repairing? Now where do you think your children will be when the sun dries up the... when the sun gets so hot it burns up the sea? <clears throat> and there's nothing but desert and nowhere to shade in this wasteland of selfish mistakes we have made. Ain't it time all started changing. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I screwed it up. Yeah.
Dankeschön. <laughs> I, I probably should have worked on that a little harder. But, uh, That's what these workshops are it is a about. Work, yeah, it's a workshop. Yeah, yeah work That's, I'm, I'm still shop. working yeah. on it. So. You know, when this festival would roll <laughs> around every year, I'd, I'd yell out to the crowd, Hey, is everybody ready to get their mag on? Oh, yeah. And, and now I'm not quite sure. Hey, is oh. everybody ready to dig your roots? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it has as much of a ring no, I, to it. but uh, How about this? Is everybody ready to get your root revived? There you go. That's, I don't know. Maybe that, that may not... All right, I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna use that. Well. <clears throat> um, hey, I wanna give a, a shout out. There's a buddy of mine I see out there, Leonard Stacy. Yeah, Leonard. The, 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 met him with Ralph Stanley years ago. And um, of course, I wanna always give a shout out to uh, Beth Judy and the man over here, Randy, Randy. Judy. <laughs> We wouldn't be here today and all of these years if it wasn't for you. And you, you know, I've got that song that is, is talking about how those things that we do for other people that change our lives. And that is definitely, this has been a life changer for me to be coming to this festival. Thank me you. Me too. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. We love you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to come out with another country album in January. I'm going to follow wow. up this, this one. And this is a song, speaking of the workshop, and it's like I say, we never know what we're going to do and so I'm going to try this one. It's been a while. Uh, I've recorded it and it'll be on this record, but I, I haven't done it much. So I'm going to step out on a limb. Mm. Uh, now that limb might crack and break, but will you catch me if I fall they on this one? Okay, well then I'm going to try it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to, I just want to say something else um you know i've got a lot in common lately with willie nelson mm. something i do every day that makes me feel like i'm walking on a cloud oh. and i'm talking about these sketchers oh. that i wear every day i feel with the patented cushioned insole I feel like I'm walking on a cloud, and you could too, with Skechers. All right, here we go. Hope springs eternal. It rings eternally. I hope that part of you rubs off on me You're the example of how love should be I hope that part of you rubs off on me Something that I know Sweet inspiration Farther as we go So while we're right here So near, luckily I hope that part of you rubs off on me. Oh, you're kind of kind 
something that I know Sweet inspiration I hope that part of you rubs off on me I hope that part of you the heart of you rubs off on me been rubbing off on me in a good way for a long time and you folks too I think we got time for you to end with one now. you think um, it sure has been fun well I'm looking forward to this yeah yeah it's been great fun thank y'all thanks <laughs> thanks for allowing us to to work out a lot of stuff in front of you and, and, and not making us feel bad about it. Right. Um, yeah, that's right. By the way, uh, how about one more word about our sponsor, uh, the uh, CVS We want to thank sanitizer. the fine folks at yeah. CVS Advanced Hand san Sanitizer. Yeah. Pick some up today. And yeah. Tell them Verlin and Jim sent yep. you. Tell them. Yeah, Jim, after a long concert and shaking a bunch of hands afterwards, I go for that CVS hand sanitizer. That's when I reach for the advanced bottle. Because you never know what these sons of bitches have been doing with their hands. So thank you, CVS, for that. mama wouldn't like that she every now and then she'll hear some of this stuff and she'll go you had the audience going so well and then you said that naughty word yeah I, I said ma I just do it for shock value I don't really mean it you know she was always concerned with uh, Guy Clark's language too when I first started playing with him she, she uh she, I played her three or four songs, and I didn't even realize it, but every one of them had either a damn or a hell or a, or a son of a bitch. You know, come on, Jack, the son of a bitch is coming. And uh, she goes, why does he have to say all them naughty words every song? I said, well, I never thought about it, Mom. I'll, I'll have to bring it up to him. <laughs> I'm sure he'll uh, stop. Anyway, you know what? This might be a good time. Speaking of old guy, he's the reason I am here. Um, yeah. He brought me along, uh, I think it was maybe in 1997 or 8 or somewhere back in there, and the stage was down on that end of the, the hall, and and I didn't even know what I was coming to. I just got in the car and came with him, and, and uh, we got down here, and uh, man, I've been coming back and back and back for more every year, and I, I just love it, and I'm so thankful guy, guy brought me. <clears throat> I remember, uh, I think the first couple years, you know, I played with Guy, and then, um, Beth and Randy were kind enough to give me my own little morning slot at, at, in the music hall. And I was so excited 
man, I'm, I'm like a headliner now, you know. And I remember I came in and I did my show and out in the audience was Guy and Beth and Randy. <laughs> and me. I don't, were you there, Jim? I was. Oh, yeah. were you? I'm, I'm the sorry. one that said, you've got this, you can do this for a living. That's Keep right, out. I forgot. I, I, you, you, that's true, you've been supported. And things have just been ever since. It's been good. It's been great. With the flower sack cape tied all around his neck Climbing up on the garage He's figuring what the heck He screws his courage up so tight That the whole thing come unwound He got a running start And bless his heart He headed for the ground But he's one of those Who knows that life Is just to leap of faith Spread your arms and hold your breath And always trust your cane Ain't that right, Sally? Well, all grown up with a flower sack Cape tied all around his dreams He's full of piss and vinegar And he's busting at the seams So he licks his finger and he checks the wind He says it's gonna be do or die he wasn't scared of nothing, y'all He's pretty sure he could fly Because he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith Spread your arms and hold your breath And always trust your game Fifteen years or longer ago, I fell off my roof and I broke, broke both of my arms. Yeah, I have been ever since. I've been staying off the roof, but... Guy and I had a big tour planned and um, uh, there I was. They put wire cages around both of my arms. I had these two machine looking things around both of my arms and and he called up sean camp and sean camp jumped right in there and i damn near lost my job to sean camp <clears throat> anyway they were gone a couple of weeks and during that couple of weeks uh i was laying around the house taking pain medication and i don't know if you've ever tried to get pain pills out of a bottle with two broken arms, but I'll make it short. The problem is you usually get more than you need. Cause it's hard to like just get one. So for that whole two weeks, I was uh, pretty much not here. And then one morning I woke up and I got one eye open and I looked up and uh, I thought I was hallucinating at first because it was there was it was a smoky haze in the room. I'm in my living room, you know, and and then I it was almost like I was seeing the Wizard of Oz. Only it was Guy Clark's silhouette hanging up here, just floating in all this smoke, you know. And I I remember thinking I I got to find a better way to get those pills out of that bottle, <laughs> you know. But. It turned out, it actually was Guy Clark. 
it, I was not hallucinating. It was Guy, and it was a smoky haze, because you know how Guy was. He, he, right there in my living room, he was blowing smoke rings over my head, and just looking down at me, and the whole room was filled with smoke. And, but I, was, I didn't care, because I was so touched that Guy had come to see me. And I was trying to say something to him, but I'd taken so many pills, I, I could only make sounds. It wasn't words. Jim, it was just like a... Nah, nah. <laughs> so I decided I'd just wait and see what Guy had to say. I'm laying here on my couch looking up, waiting for Guy Clark to speak, and it took forever, but he finally, it, like he always did, he got right down to the heart of the matter with very few words, and he said, You didn't trust your cape, did you? <laughs> now he's old and gray with a flower sack cape tied all around his head. And he's still jumping off the garage and will be till he's dead. And all these years the people said he's acting like a kid. Well, he did not know that he could not fly, so he did. Because he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith. Spread your arms and hold your breath and always trust your king. Just like us, Jim. We just spread our arms and we trust our cape. We just believe everything's going to work out, don't we? I hope it does. Spread your arms and hold your breath, y'all, and always trust your cape. Thank you, Jim Lauderdale. I love you. Thank you very much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Berlin Thompson. Thank you.